Hi guys, in this video I am going to use an example of computing weighted averages in order to demonstrate the difference between absolute references and relative references in Excel and in spreadsheets in the whole. Okay, so in this example we want to compute the weighted average of each student using these weights provided here. Okay? The way you would compute this would be to multiply each for each student their grade by for each test by its respective weight plus the next grade times its respective weight plus the final grade times its weight. Now we can see that in this weight scheme over here that the third grade gets the most weight here, 0.5, right? So the professor here is computing some kind of a final grade or term grade, putting a lot more emphasis on the final exam, the third exam, okay, and putting less weight on the first two, okay? So just to explain what's going on here. So we can hit enter here. Now I've computed the weighted average of student for student one using these weights over here. And that's all well and good. But how about if I have many, many students, hundreds of students, I have a big lecture hall, right? Or you can think of many other examples where you, you might need, uh, you might not want to type this formula over and over. What will happen if I pull this formula down? Well, look, I get a lot of weird, weird numbers and error messages, and I know something's gone wrong. Well, let's go into the second student's weighted average and see what happened. When we click into the formula bar, we get a little preview and highlighting of the cells involved in the formula in question. And we see that the weights are not being used. Instead, these blank cells are being used in this formula. We also notice that the tests have moved from student one to student two, which actually we're very happy about. But we're very unhappy about what happened here. Okay? And that's what's resulting in our error. Now, what if we can make a formula which allows these cells to move down cell C7, D7, and E7 to move down to C8, D8, and E8, but lock these cells, the weights, so that they don't move down when I drag my formula down. Right? That's the idea. Well, in order to do this, we, we need to understand the difference between absolute cell references and relative cell references. What we have here in our formula, the first formula we created, is are all relative cell references. Notice there's no dollar sign. When you do not have do the dollar sign in front of your references, then these are relative cell references. And relative cell references, like the ones we did for our for our student one will change when you move the formula when you drag the formula down okay as you notice the last guy if we click in there the 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 grades moved to the per appropriate student but the weights are somebody else's grades instead of being the original thing we wanted so we need to to somehow lock these things or absolute reference these and not lock these. Okay, and the way you do that is you do the formula once the right way in the first for the first student, and then you can drag this formula down as far as you need. Okay? So let's go back in here and build this formula from scratch using the appropriate references. So equals the first test grade for student one times the weight 
for that test. Except before we move on, we want to lock this weight because we do not want this to move when later we drag our formula down. But we do want this to move, so we do not want to lock C7. And the way we lock C4 is by putting dollar signs in front of the C and dollar sign in front of the 4. OK? Next, plus the second test times the second weight. And again, we want to lock the weight. So we put dollar signs in front of the D and in front of the 4. And we have so far locked these two, or we've made these absolute cell references, and we've left these two so far as relative cell references. These will change, these, these, sorry, will not change, and these will change when the formula is moved. And finally, we need to add the third exam times its respective weight, and we want to lock the 0.5, which is in cell E4, by putting dollar signs in front of the E and a dollar sign in front of the 4. So we have locked these, we've made these absolute, and we've left these unlocked, and these are referred to as relative. Now let's hit enter. We get the same average, except now if we pull this formula down, voila, we don't get error messages and funny looking numbers. And if we were to click in one of these random cells here, and look at what ha what's gone on by clicking in the formula bar, we see that the weights did not move as we wanted them to stay there. But the test grades did move down when we dragged, because now this line is interested in student 4, so we should be looking at student 4's test grades and not at any other student's test grades. And the weights should stay steady. And that's the way you do it. Okay? So I hope this was helpful in uh, clearing up the difference between absolute and relative cell references, as well as a little introduction to computing weighted average, a situation where this becomes useful. Although cell referencing is useful in almost everything you do in Excel. So this is an absolute essential skill to learn. If you want to understand more about weighted averages, I have a whole video on computing weighted averages and the idea, the math behind it. I implore you to check that video out, as well as to subscribe to my channel. Check out all the other Excel Access PowerPoint mathematics and statistics videos. Until next time, have a great day.